so that's been my big thing. Wow. We're getting ready. Hello, and joining me today on the G Summit 2013 Expo floor is Rajat Baharia. He is the founder and chief product officer at Bunchball. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, and thanks for the wonderful presentation you gave this morning here at G Summit. Um, the word of the day for you is loyalty. Loyalty. Can you uh, go into a little bit of detail about the way that we look at loyalty typically today yeah. and what you define as loyalty 3.0? Sure, yeah, so loyalty 1.0 is kind of all the, uh, the points for purchase, buy 10, get one free stamp cards that you know today, which are really all about kind of earning and then burning at the end of the day, and in the middle, there's kind of no loyalty being generated. And even at the beginning and the end, there's no real loyalty being generated to the business. There's loyalty being generated to the deal, uh, which is not actually what businesses want. And yet they're spending billions of dollars on these loyalty programs that aren't actually effectively driving loyalty. You mentioned the word inertia. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, there, uh, my, my colleague Barry Kirk at Bunchball has these kind of four different levels of, of loyalty that are out there, which I think is really um, a nice clean way of articulating the different levels of loyalty that are out there today. And so at the very bottom yeah. is this inertia loyalty, right? Which is like, I'm just too lazy to move or it's just too inconvenient to move. Mm -hmm. Like this is my corner grocery store. I'm gonna go there. I'm not gonna go 10 miles out of my way, right? Then the one step above that is where you have almost every single loyalty program today, which is the mercenary loyalty phase, right. which is I'm gonna go to whoever gives me the best deal, mm -hmm. right? And that's where almost every single loyalty program seems stuck today. But as consumers, like if you're gonna give me 2% back on my credit card, you're gonna give me three, see you later, I'm going to three, right? You there, brought up telecom as a big example. Exactly. There is no um, resistance to a competitive offer in mercenary loyalty. Mm -hmm. And that's what the true definition of loyalty is, right? That you've established a relationship that has gone beyond the transaction and, uh, and you've engaged the customer mm -hmm. so that in the face of a competitive offer or somebody else coming in and trying to steal your customer, they stick with you. And that's the next tier up, which is true loyalty, mm -hmm. right? This kind of relationship, this engagement. And then finally, the last level is cult loyalty, which you can't really manufacture, but you can cultivate. And companies like, um, like Apple and Harley Davidson have done a really good job at that. And that becomes almost a, a frame or a lens through which you look at the world, right? Like it colors everything about your worldview and about the way you see anything. And so the whole goal of Loyalty 3.0 is, how do we move beyond this purely transactional model? Mm -hmm. How do we um, leverage all the new data that we have? You know, the Loyalty 1.0 models were very much, you had one data input stream, transactions, mm -hmm. and you had one constituent you were serving, customers. Right. Loyalty 3.0 says, look, You've got all this data. Everybody's doing everything online now. Mm -hmm. Every single thing they're doing is a new data point in your loyalty program. Take all that and use it not only for your customers, but for your partners and your employees as well, because they're equally important to the success of your business. Absolutely. So you touched on something just a moment ago with regard to um, businesses themselves actually defining loyalty in this old antiquated way. What is Bunchball doing to sort of change the mindset around that? Yeah, so uh, first off, we're, we're broadcasting this message kind of as widely and, and uh, uh, broadly as we can. We just wrote a book called Loyalty 3.0 that will be published in June by McGraw-Hill. And Great. the whole premise of that book is latest understanding of motivation, all this big data on user activity, and gamification, which is these data-driven motivational techniques that game designers, video game designers, have used for years. You combine all that to drive actual true loyalty. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're very excited. That book's coming out uh, mid-June, McGraw-Hill Publishing, and we've had a great initial reception to it already, just from the people we've shown advanced copies to. So uh, on the back cover, we've got endorsements from people like Brad Smith, the CEO of Intuit. Great. And uh, Clara Shee, the CEO of Her Hearsay Social and a board member at Star Bucks. Excellent. Uh, Mark Reed, the CEO of WPB Digital, and um, uh, Ray Bennett, the Chief Lodging Services Officer at Marriott International. So a really broad range of companies that are seeing the applicability of this new lens or frame on loyalty to right. their businesses, not only for their customers, but also employees and partners. I'm not surprised. I would imagine they're really ready to be getting this feedback. Um, so loyalty as we know it now, you're trying to change that. The argument has been made about loyalty programs and about gamification that 
once it's ubiquitous, yes. how is it a differentiator anymore? How does it create a competitive advantage? So what's your feeling about that? <laughs> yeah, we, we, it was really funny. In the early days of gamification, when we were first doing this in 2007, 2008, that question came up a lot. Like, what do you do when everybody's doing this? And I was like, I'm going to go to Disneyland. Because <laughs> right? like, that means I'm going to be doing really well. Uh, you know, that hasn't, it, it's taken time for mm -hmm. that kind of stuff to happen. But really, at the end of the day, these tools are about amplifying kind of your differentiators and your core value proposition, right? Okay. If you're in a commodity market and you've got the same loyalty kind of program that every other commodity player has, it's still a commodity. You've had a commodity on top of a commodity, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have some core differentiator in your product, whether it's service or the product or some particular angle you're taking, and then you use these loyalty programs to amplify those differentiators, that's where the win comes, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we always talk uh, with our customers and prospects about you know, having some core intrinsic value to the thing that you are gamifying. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, uh, you know, you're kind of hosed, right? And, and that's kind of like the number one problem you should be trying to figure out. And so, you know, like Foursquare is a great example, right? Mm -hmm. Like Foursquare is, um, uh, it's done incredibly well at using gamification to onboard users. On day one, they need people to press the button so they can get data about where people are going. And why would I press the button? Because there's no value, right. right? But they build the gamification mechanics into it. They onboard people, people are pressing the button, they're capturing data. Now the challenge is, what is the core value that they're providing to users? Because the gamification element on its own can't sustain that utilization over time. They need to have some core value prop that they're serving, whether it's right. city guide or uh, deals from local merchants or meet hot singles nearby, who knows? They're trying all these things, you can clearly tell, right. um, to become the discovery engine, the local search engine. Uh, but they need to figure that out uh, in order to succeed. So they can amplify that as opposed to just getting people onboarded. Right, and with your approach, you mentioned being limited currently to really one set of transactional data and not having a lot of insight into the customer and being able to individualize these programs and experiences. So talk to me about data. Yeah, so I mean, that's kind of the core atomic unit of everything we do, right? It's user activity data. Mm -hmm. And everything we're doing is transitioning online. Our community, our finance, our education, our sports, um, you know, at work, all this stuff that used to happen kind of ad hoc in paper, in email, is now happening in formal systems. Salesforce automation systems, learning management systems, collaboration systems. Our play is all happening via Facebook and Twitter and like, you know, all these other tools, Instagram. Uh, WhatsApp, all these things, right. Line, and uh, and it's all trackable, therefore, right? And so there's this huge new set of raw material, and particularly in the workplace, it amazes me that people are ignoring that, right? So like, if you look at the consumer space, they've clearly figured out that we should be looking at every single thing that consumers are doing on our websites, analyzing, optimizing, and using that to drive business value for our business and to make these customers more valuable to us. Mm -hmm. In the workplace, this place where we spend eight, 10, 12 hours, you know, 16, 20 hours a day, you know, doing stuff in these systems that the work owner owns and all that data is floating off into the ether. Right. Nobody is looking at it, nobody's analyzing it and using it to optimize employee performance, to make life better for the employees, for the managers, to mm -hmm. like run all the data, the predictive analytics, the cohort analysis, like all that stuff that they've mastered in the consumer space, nobody's taken into the enterprise space. And so right. we see that as a huge opportunity space for gamification and loyalty in the enterprise area. I would imagine a lot of that phenomenon is really data overwhelm and how to distill down the really important kernels of it and apply it back to your business. I know that your analytics platform plugs right into many standard analytics systems. Can you tell us a little bit about what the learning curve has been for some of your users? Yeah, I mean, you know, data, there's never been a shortage of data, and the, the problem around data has always been like, how do I make it uh, something actionable and insightful, right? Mm -hmm. And big data kind of just amplifies that problem, right? Like, it, it just makes it bigger <laughs> and hairier. <laughs> and so the, the core question is always like, how do I take this data? How do I know the right questions to ask that will get me the right actionable data out at the end? And so we have an analytics team, uh, two of the guys spoke yesterday, mm -hmm. Matt Williams and Keith Conley, data scientist, analytics manager, about everything we're doing in that space. And so this is kind of the year of analytics for us. Like we have all this great data, user activity data, right? And people have things like Omniture and Google Analytics already. That's kind of content analytics, right? Like right. funnels through uh, pages and things like that. It's not about user behavior and activity. So we actually serve to complement that stuff really well, give you a new way of looking at things. And then you take that data and you can use that as kind of the raw material for uh, a whole another set of analyses, whether it's cohort analyses or Pareto analyses or drop-off analyses, like all these kinds of things you can do with that data. And so 
Uh, we're using tools like Tableau, we're, we're using tools like Hadoop, we're using all these kinds of things to crunch that data and provide it to our customers in an easily digestible form that they can actually use to make decisions. Great. Well, as product master, uh, what what can we expect next from you guys? What's on the horizon? Yeah, so I mean, you, you can see the kind of the what's happened in the last couple of years, where at the end of 2011, if you had looked at our customer mix, you would have probably seen like 90 percent consumer and customer oriented, 10 percent employee oriented. Mm -hmm. So like the end of last year, 2012, where you probably would see like maybe 60 percent employee, 40 percent customer, and it's like that trend is it's actually fascinating. So we're still doing a bunch of great stuff in the consumer space. Uh, we've recently, in the last quarter or two, closed deals with like a bunch of major brands around loyalty programs, uh, both online and offline. But in the enterprise space, you're seeing us integrate into platforms like Salesforce, like Jive, like IBM Connections. Right. We're working on stuff with some of the other major uh, enterprise software vendors and getting wide distribution into the enterprise on the backs of this really big install base to make those platforms better because every business is trying to drive more sales performance, they're trying to drive more compliance, they're trying to drive collaboration, they're trying to drive help desk activity, they're trying to drive training. And they're buying software platforms to enable them to do that. And almost every single time, those software programs are having issues around adoption, engagement, performance, utilization, and we help with that. So everybody loves it, right? The business owner loves it because they're getting ROI on the tool. The vendor loves it because they get renewals and upsells. And we love it because, number one, it drives our business, but number two, it gives us access to data. Absolutely. Lots of really good data. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of exciting stuff to come. Thank you so much for joining me today, Rajat. Sure, thank you Always for Always a pleasure, me. and look forward to next time. Yes, likewise, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for joining us and tuning in to G-Summit 2013.